Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're watching and listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, our very special guest is Sorita Antaria. Sorita Antaria is an internationally renowned psychic. Sorita is best known as an ET communicator who also speaks light language. Clairvoyant from a young age, Sorita has long been aware of other dimensional realities and is also an ET UFO experiencer. Having helped hundreds of people around the world connect with their ETs and interdimensional guides that assist them on their mission here on Earth, this shines light, clarity, and brings a sense of comfort, comfort confirmation, and a renewed enthusiasm on their soul path. Having studied kinesiology, hypnotherapy, and shamanic studies, Sorita has an advanced diploma in health sciences. So Rita currently lives in Melbourne, Australia, working as an author, spiritual mentor, teacher, and YouTube channel host. So without any further ado, so Rita Ontario, welcome to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Thanks so much for having me, James. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, the pleasure is all ours, so Rita. Uh, for the benefit of our listeners, tell us a bit about yourself and, and how you came into an, an awareness of, of who you are and the understanding and awareness of, of the greater reality around us yeah so for me um i guess that that awareness uh of different realities was really from a young age probably age four is about the earliest memories that i can go back to apart from like looking into you know other multi-dimensional or past lives um but yeah i always sort of had more of a clairvoyant ability and um clairsentient ability so you know that inner feeling or that inner knowing and i remember you know, pondering on life's bigger questions about the universe and wanting to understand and work out how everything works. And it's funny, I remember asking my parents different questions about different things, but I can never get enough uh, depth or, you know, clarity on, you know, certain questions. So I'd always kind of set intention and explore more in like a meditative universal sense from a young age. Uh, and also, you know, experienced a lot of different dimensional uh, beings appearing in my room when I was quite young too. So every night calling my parents into my room to come and look at, you know, things that were in my room and of course they'd come in and not have that um, perceptual awareness into those other realities. So, you know, they would say there's nothing there. Uh, and it was probably about age 17 or 18 that I would still go into their room most nights and say there's something in my room. Sometimes I would see like portals open up in my room. Um, I would have different geometries that would be in the room, different beings, uh, different sort of like astral type experiences, some ETs, some spirits, spirit guides. Um, you know, I had an experience growing up, but you know, for me, that kind of thing is actually quite normal. I think I would feel quite different in the world if I didn't have things going on like that. When you be having experiences and you've been seeing you know, portals open up, do you have a sense of feeling about communication? Was there an effort on the part of one intelligence or intelligence to be aware of the shot and try to it? Yeah, so I'm um, looking into uh, regression as well. So I had a regression with Mary Rodwell uh, a couple of times now. I was able to look at more in depth and really go back to those young ages and see what's happening. So a lot of those interactions were on an ET level. Um, some of them were like uh, on education. So a lot of ET experience all about you know, when go to sleep at night, but we often go to college at night school or you know, go on board raft and have um, you know, further studies or further education. So that's something that I used to um, experience and feel into when I was younger. It was feeling like I was you know, learning, studying, downloading. So sometimes um, a lot of experiences will have unusual sleeping patterns. So when I was younger, there was always not much to go to sleep at night because I knew that that was, you know, when I was not in that waking state, I didn't have as much control control over, you know, what was going to happen. I always knew um, when an experience was going to take place. The same as now, sometimes there'll be, um, you know, it's sort of a different feeling as you're going off to sleep. You'll know that you're going to have contact. Not always, but some nights you'll get, it's like a difference in the air or the atmosphere around you. And sometimes that's when other people are there. Sometimes, um, you know, I had a friend that I was traveling with um, just at the start of the year and I woke him up in the middle of the night uh, because there was something in the room um, in which he, he happened to see as well. So, you know, it's good having confirmation, you know, having friends and, um, and family that can see some things. Not that there's really too much family, but I do have some friends that are quite like family that, that will see things as well. Now, when you mentioned that you have an eclair audience ability and a clairvoyant ability, can you give our listeners an example of what you mean by that and, and how it applies? I mean, what some psychics and intuitives tell me is they manage to assimilate these abilities to the point where they use it in their day-to-day -day life. They use it to, like, find a parking space or even yeah. relatively mundane things that, that they, yeah. after a while, they begin to figure it out. So this is, this is, like, where my passion lies and, you know, 
uh, with what I teach and workshops and also in my book is that I'm fascinated by the psychic senses. So for me, what I think that like what we're capable of and perhaps like what, you know, science hasn't discovered about our brain power yet is that there is so many latent abilities that humans are born with that are not perhaps switched on or we're only using, you know, some people say, what, 10% of our brain power. And I think, you know, when we tap in and we can utilize these psychic skills, I really feel like we're using other aspects of our brains. And looking at um, some psychics and the studies they've done with measuring, you know, EEG waves, the, the helmets that you have hooked up with all the little electrodes, when they're performing readings, what they've actually found is that some of these psychics will go into such a zen, almost monk-like state, um, the brain waves will, you know, become very calm, very relaxed. And I think when we can get into these states, we can kind of go between, uh, go between realities and we can kind of, you know, reach out interdimensionally. And to me, it feels like I'm grabbing information sometimes interdimensionally or I'm connecting with beings that are in an interdimensional space and I'm able to just kind of fine tune and listen in. It's as though, um, each of the psychic senses builds upon a physical sense. So for me, when I'm looking at something clairvoyantly, which means like clear seeing, I'm looking at something not necessarily just with my eyes, like looking at auras, which you can see physically around people. You'll see like a soft haze or a glow um, or sometimes something that's more illuminated um, depending on like that person's energy field. Uh, but also there's another, there's another side to the clairvoyant seeing. It's like seeing with your third eye as well. So there's the, the three different visual aspects. There's seeing the aura, the energy field. There's the normal human perception of seeing in the physical 3D reality. And then we've got the inner scene, which is connected more with the pineal gland. Um, and so looking into the other senses like clear audience, it's really about clear hearing, but we're hearing more on a, a spiritual level or a spiritual sense. So sometimes that will be almost like a, a voice projected or sometimes people hear it as a voice externally um you know if it's actual like spirits that have passed on sometimes that's when you hear it externally where if it's more guides to me it's almost like i feel like i'm leaning into that dimension and they're just relaying information to me so what level we want to get to when working with the psychic senses is to get to a point of um synthesia or like a blending of the senses where it becomes one sense organ so it's not that we're just utilizing like one sense because we all individually will have um senses that are stronger than the other so someone might be more clairvoyant or more clairaudient but essentially we want to get to the point um in a development level of where we're using all of them as one sense organ so we're receiving multiple streams of information what some uh, intuitives and, and psychics have describe is before and i don't know if this applies to you i'd like your thoughts on it uh, yeah when first coming to grips with their say clear audience abilities sometimes they, they get kind of an overload or a swamp a swamping sensation of, of all this sensory input in a clear audience sense and how would one if they're going through that how would they be able to filter out all the extraneous clutter let's say uh, to get to the the signal yeah, so I think when it comes to psychic senses, it's very much like tuning into a radio station. So we have to have clear intent about what we're wanting to connect with. We also have to check the integrity of what we're connecting with as well. Yes. And I think that's the most important aspect is that, you know, some people will tune into information or perhaps not really care about the information they're receiving. It's that they're just excited about you know receiving information or you know connecting with beings in different realms and they don't really care so much about like what um what the intention might be with that being we always want to make sure that the beings we're working with and the guides that we're listening to and and working with that they have you know an unconditional love for us and that they're there for our best and highest good because anything that's not of that is more either self-serving or they're there to kind of like buff the ego up um, and that's usually also to then drain uh, on a human level. So I think that's probably, you know, one of the main things with this um, is just making sure that when you are tuning in to, to make sure that it's coming from a loving space. I, I think that it's something that, um, you know, for me as a child, I, I always wished that I had a teacher or a guide or, you know, some kind of like Merlin figure or master that would appear to me and just, 
you know, be the teacher and give me all of those answers. Uh, it wasn't until I was about uh, 15 that I started to go to a kinesiologist that was working with me for dyslexia. Um, and he actually said to my parents, I was telling him about some of the experiences and my mum would say, you know, she doesn't sleep at night. We've never been able to get her to go to sleep. And then she's like up first thing in the morning. And this, this was mainly because I didn't want to go to sleep because I was experiencing so much at night time because um, especially between the hours of like midnight till three, it's kind of like psychic hour. Our, um, our consciousness becomes more receptive to this kind of information and the energies are sometimes referred to as like the witching hour. Um, and so people consciously will have like an expansion or um, they're easier to communicate to. So sometimes this is where spirit comes in or, you know, ET experiences and out of body experiences tend to happen around this hour. Um, but yeah, going back to that, you, you're fine. I jump all over the place. Oh, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. <laughs> um, it's usually I'm receiving like multiple streams of information when I'm working with people, you know, in a, um, in like an aura drawing session as well, that allows me to kind of jump from one thing to the next. Uh, but yeah, it was probably about age 15 that I found out, um, my kinesiologist had said to my parents, look, she's actually, she's really psychic. She probably should go and do some training and learn how to, you know, work with it so that, um, those abilities can develop even further. And even though like my mum was intrigued by it and she, um, agreed with it, she said, uh, I want her to finish school first. So to finish year 12, uh, and then I actually went on and studied kinesiology after because I, I, uh, started to get a passion for working with people and you know wanting to help people and um, so yeah never really did have that kind of like Merlin figure master fully materialized but always had like a perception of guides on a spirit level that were there but I did have some really beautiful teachers that you know understood what was happening to me and really encouraged me and um, one beautiful teacher uh, that I had for kinesiology she would always say to me you know if you see anything in the room you know tell me like we you know she would always encourage me and um, I guess it was you know like we can learn from this as well you know like we uh, with speaking out against you know different things that we see in the room and that you know others are able to learn or it can be confirmation for other things that are going on too so I was really I was blessed to have um, such a beautiful teacher in that way. What is kinesiology? Could you describe that in a nutshell? Yeah, so I always describe it more as a combination or the basis of it being in Chinese medicine, the philosophy, and chiropractic. So it's almost like a, a marriage of those two, um, those two modalities and then a philosophy and uh, physical practice is kind of born out of that. And how were you and how were your kinesiology instructors able to utilize kinesiology to help you refine and, and hone your psychic abilities? Yeah, so um, I was really blessed in that, um, so for me, uh, kinesiology is a, it's also a biofeedback uh, response. So it's asking the body certain questions and we're using a muscle, in, an indicator muscle to gain a response. So you're working with a locking and unlocking muscle when you're asking the body certain questions. So you're also working at balancing the body on a mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual level. You can also do like nutritional testing, work with like brain um, and work with like physical, you know, body elements that are going on as well. So my teachers are really lovely in the sense of I would quite often get answers come to me before asking a client's body um, certain questions. So I would feel um, my body become like an indicator change. So instead of waiting for an arm to unlock to get a, a muscle response to a question that we were asking the body, I would feel it uh, within myself or I would get like a clear audible answer uh, to what was happening and my teachers were really beautiful encouraging that so they let me work without the muscle testing and then I only had to use the muscle testing more you know in exams just to show that I understood like the mechanics of it. When the impressions would come through to you uh, let's say as a young girl 15 years old thereabouts mm -hmm. and, and I imagine there was some adjustment period because at some point you decided this is who I am I'm not going to change for everyone else. Maybe I might not tell them all the stuff that's going on because they might not understand, but I'm still yeah. going to be me. And as time goes on and you began to get this training, when did you realize that you know, there could be a healing aspect to it? Because I, I imagine you get in someone's energy field and sometimes you just start getting impressions whether that person 
wants guidance or help or not. Yeah. So um, it, it was probably around primary school age that I really, you know, I, I had memories of past lives working as a healer, working with herbs and poultices and, um, you know, all different types of alchemical, um, you know, drops and potions and things like that. So um, always as a young kid, I would play, um, you know, with my friends making potions and different things, you know, in primary school. Um, so for me, that was something that I always felt and knew that was within me and that I'd done before. So it felt very natural when I did find um, natural medicine and kinesiology. Uh, so I guess it just felt like I was finding my, um, or part of, part of my soul's work and, and part of, you know, that stream of helping people. And I think there's so many different expressions of how we can help people. But I was always one that was quite um, sure within myself. So even at a young age, I was quite, um, or a very young age, quite shy uh, because we quite often take on our parents' you know, uh, demeanour. So my mum was quite shy. And then I think it was probably about age 10, I started doing um, some drama club you know, with school and out of school and, you know, that confidence all of a sudden just kicked in. And I think that's when like a, a reassurance in who I was as a person kicked in. And I definitely think that when I went into uh, high school, they're just, I've always uh, had, had a surety like within myself and never felt that I've had to try and fit to live within anyone else's reality or tried to, you know, have to fit into a mold to please someone else. I think I've always felt, you know, pretty happy within myself in that way. That's important. So, Rita, so many that are gifted in this fashion, you know, they just feel out of sorts. They feel shame-based almost. They feel that they don't fit in because the norms for everyone else is, well, for people, I guess, somewhat abnormal. And yeah. you raised some interesting points also that I wanted to bring up with you. The, the key facet of our past lives and how they play a role in, in who we are, because we are the sum of all of our parts, past, present, parallel uh, incarnations. And you mentioned as a young girl, you had memories of yourself know, as a healer, as an herbalist. Can, can you take us through that process? And did they come in, in fragmentary uh, you know, flashbacks and dreams, or did they come in more visionary experiences? How did that play itself out? Yeah, so um, a, a whole different, like, myriad of different things. So sometimes you would, um, like I would receive, I think it was more, it's come in different stages. So definitely like when I was younger, there was a lot more memories of like a medieval type times. Um, there's been like off world memories as well. Um, some of them uh, being like more Native American. So I remember being uh, initiated like a medicine woman. I remember a lifetime like where my grandfather had died and I was being initiated and I could feel and smell and see myself inside this um, teepee and felt the energy and um, like the memory of what it was like leading up to that initiation and like what kind of, um, not pressure, but like what kind of huge deal it was to be taking that on and to be responsible for like that village or, or that tribe. So yeah, they have come in different fragments. Sometimes it's almost like watching a movie. So it's like, this reality sometimes will go on to pause and you're seeing purely like from a third eye perspective and things are kind of replaying. And you saw glimpses of yourself in some of these past lives and it has a direct parallel with what you're doing now. You talked about the healing aspect. Uh, mm. Could you tell us a bit, you alluded to a moment ago about some of the off world incarnations. I, I'd really like to hear whatever you're comfortable sharing. Uh, yeah, sure. And, and they're definitely some of my favorite. And I think also um, the other thing, so like as we talk, sometimes I'll get, you know, different information from my guides and from, um, you know, beings that also want to bring information through like while we're talking, especially when we're doing shows. So one of the things that they also want to express um, is that, you know, it's really important for those of us that have always felt different or have always known that, you know, we've come from different places or that we have a certain soul mission. It's really important that we don't have to really try and fit to live within this 3D earth reality. We're really here to anchor and bring a new earth reality here. So we're here to lift the consciousness and the vibration of the earth. 
Um, we're here to create change. We're here to stir things up a little bit. So sometimes that will also be creating controversy. Um, but yeah, it's really important to, to speak your heart, to speak your truth. Um, and I, I've got beautiful friends that, um, that are doing that, uh, that speak light language. You know, some of them are healers, some of them uh, authors. There's a, a whole different myriad of people that are, you know, impacting change upon the world. And it's just so beautiful to see them shine their light. And it's also, it's a lot different to what it was 10 years ago. I know when I was a lot younger, I'm 38 now. Um, I'll be 40 next year. And I know that when I was, you know, kindergarten age, my guides were very much, don't talk to anyone about this stuff. You know, you'll be locked up in a crazy home. And I didn't even know what that meant as a child. I just knew that it wasn't safe to be able to talk about it. And it was probably around when I went to high school that I started to, maybe towards the end of high school, just start to like talk about little things like, you know, auras and um, colours in auras. And also, what that ties into as well is we're talking about past life. So quite often when I'm working with clients doing an aura drawing, um, which I also combine the tarot cards and a clairvoyant reading, um, if I see like an aqua or turquoise color come up in someone's aura, depending on like where the placement of it is in the aura, that will quite often denote that there's some kind of past life ability, talent or pattern that's surfacing at that point in time for the person who I'm doing the reading for. So we'll tune in, look into the placement of where it is, depending on where it is in the body, like if it's closer to the body near a mental or emotional level, say like around the head, it's some kind of like information that is trying to relay that's connected like with um, the mental or emotional body. Um, so yeah, quite often we'll kind of like tap into the energy of that. And sometimes I'll be showing like past lives and, you know, different things that have happened to that person in the past life. And it could be in terms of like a relationship, like repeating patterns and showing them how they can break a certain pattern so they don't have to live through that same karmic um, event. Or sometimes it will be, you know, utilizing a gift that they've always had a passion for, but they've not known how to do it. It might encourage that confidence for them to go and study, um, you know, writing or natural medicine or to, you know, learn more about painting. It really is unique and tailored to each individual. And I think the more that we can tap into these unique soul abilities, the easier it is for us to be here on earth and to be able to, you know, partake in our soul mission and to be able to help as many people as we can in this lifetime. Because I really feel that that's why we're here is to make a difference in the world, to really connect back up in a global consciousness, um, which I guess can be seen um, psychically as like a grid or a network of light going across the globe. From your experience, though, Rita, when you tap into someone's energy field, for information field, for lack of a better term, and you, you see that aqua, those aqua bands or however you perceive them, and you know that mm -hmm. there's some latent, uh, abilities and capabilities within this person what seems in your experience to, to be some of the the things that create a blockage if you will that, that maybe at least temporarily preventing an individual from accessing uh or, or realizing their full potential yeah and it, it's funny because like as we do talk about it in a session um a lot of the time we'll get confirmation and that's where people get surprised that um, they're like, oh, how did you know about that? Or how can you see that? And it really is, you know, working as a psyche and a clairvoyant, it really is always me having to trust the information that I'm seeing, not to second guess myself. And as crazy and as out there and it can be at times, it really is just saying the first thing that you see, the first thing that you hear and feel. And the more that we um, tune in and get on target, the more excited the guides get as well. So they'll get like really excited and happy that, you know, we're talking about something that they're trying to also shine light on in the aura as well. And then it's also looking at, um, you know, on a human physical level, because that's information that's possibly, you know, coming through from a multi-dimensional life. Um, Cause sometimes we'll have these same abilities and talents that we're also working with in other multi-dimensional lifetimes that are happening possibly in parallel universes, or, you know, like if we look into like super string theory, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it really is looking at, okay, is there, a way to tap into this other multi-dimensional life so that I can learn more information from that or can I stream some of that energy in from that lifetime you can also do exchange as well so sometimes there might be something that another aspect or another multi-dimensional part of you 
is learning from yourself on this earth life as well. You know, in terms of looking at the earth school and like what we're going through here, like looking at politics, looking at, you know, the environmental stuff that's happening, even though it's negative type things that a lot of us, especially star seeds, wish that we can change, that has so much um, to teach, you know, other places so that they don't have to go through that as well. So there is an exchange on both levels that happens. That's a very good point, Sylvita, because oftentimes myself, colleagues, and people in our networks, we talk about these very subjects where we have the oversoul, for lack of a better term, and then you have yeah. these different aspects of yourself in, in parallel uh, incarnations. And we talk about how we can sometimes piggyback or look through the eyes of, of our counterparts and this, that, or the other reality, but sometimes we don't think that the other way around could happen. Like they can tap into our reality and kind of yeah. learn and see what we're going through. Because, like, for example, in some of these alternate realities, and, and let me know what your thoughts on this are, it seems that some of them may be a little further down the track, if you will, uh, in a timeline sense, in a technology sense, in a spiritual progress sense compared to we are, maybe a little further back depending on what reality. But because there's all this interconnection in a multi-dimensional sense, there's a lot of free flow at times, depending on if, you know, one can tap into that. And there's a lot of learning to be had if we're open to that also. Yeah, definitely. And I, I love that you're into this topic as well, because it's one that really excites me and I don't always get to talk about. So say for like looking into like the positives of this earth reality, one of them would be physical touch. Not, not all um, realities that we live in have physical touch. And I think that's such an important extra sense that we have here on the 3D physical reality and, you know, looking at love and looking at, um, you know, extensions of love and how we can physically nurture. But then we also have the flip side of that as, you know, we experience pain and different things as well. But um, it really, there's so much information to be gathered and learnt from, from those lights. And I know that um, some of the beings that aren't living in this reality and some spirits that pass on, you know, quite often they might stay around a little bit longer because they're not ready sh to shift from that physical reality because it is quite special to, to the earth school, this 3D reality. Not saying that we don't have that in other places, um, but it is, it is part of our special thing that we have here on earth. That's a very good point, Sylvia, and I talk about this a lot, the, the importance of remaining embodied. It, it, it's, a, it's important on the one hand to recognize that we do have this multidimensional aspect to us where literally we can reach out in every direction, if you will. But mm -hmm. the fact that we're in embodiment, I mean, we're here in embodiment for a reason, to feel, to touch, to have these sensate uh, things go on around us and interact with our surroundings in such a way, and it, it is unique to us. You know, mm -hmm. we talk about the importance of hugging and how endorphins are released, and it turns out that when people hug trees, you know, the old jokes about the tree huggers, there is a mutually beneficial symbiotic aspect to that, where the tree benefits, the person benefits, right? Because it's, it's an all an energy flow, uh, a mutually beneficial one. I mean, isn't that amazing? that they can measure that as well. Yeah. I find that fascinating. And I think, you know, talking about the psychic senses that we were talking about before being an extension of the, like the physical sense. I also look at, um, you know, like tantric type work and energy that's connected, you know, like with couples or with people that are, you know, really have some kind of chemistry going on on some level. And if we can look at um, like the basis of like that human love and physical touch, but what if we can upgrade that and take that to another level and really connect those energies? We can work with the chakras of both the energy fields to create, um, you know, a, a whole nother field or a whole nother energy dynamic when you connect those two energy fields together as well and really achieve and connect to, to much higher levels. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that we're talking about, a lot of it is deeply personal. And, you know, being a Scorpio dragon, there's always that aspect of me, you know, you know, you know some stuff, keep it close to the vest, security, yeah. security, security. But just whatever you, you feel comfortable sharing, I, I'd be interested in knowing because you've got the ability to see into the inner planes. Have you had occasion to interact with a counterpart, if you will, whether it was an, an ET aspect of yourself, whether it was... Uh, you know, a past life aspect of yourself. A recent guest of mine talked about how she 
basically had this mystical vision where she saw herself in, you know, from the 1930s, and they kind of looked at each other and had that moment, you know. They, has anything like that happened to you? Yeah, definitely. So um, some, some of the things that I get, I, I guess it would be classified as some kind of deja vu. So I'll have like on the physical earth level, how we talked about like oversouls before and, you know, multidimensional lives. I'll have where I'll go back to a point within childhood or to like a physical location on the earth where it'll feel like an energy portal. And I'll have like this moment in this lifetime, in this timeline, where all of a sudden it's like, I'll just get this clear vision and image and it feels like a direct correlation to that time. So like one example is... Um, I think I was maybe age 15. So, you know, I have being in this timeline of being 38 years old, I had almost like, um, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. We don't always have the, the language in English to be able to no, uh, describe right. things. It's really difficult sometimes. So um, almost like a direct telepathic correlation or where like my portal opens at 38 and then the portal of 15 year old me opens and there's this direct energy match or awareness and perception of each other in space and time. So I remember back to being 15 years old, standing on a pier, um, at the beach in Perth and then having this awareness of almost like looking around going, I felt like this before, or there's something different within this energy and this space. And then the 38 year old uh, part of me is having this vision and this awareness of the energy of that 15 year old self. So that's like one experience. I guess we would also call it like a glitch in the matrix. Yes. Um, but then there is the other glitches that are, you know, this, you know, version of myself in the here and now, then having, you know, the other glitches with the multidimensional aspects. And I think, you know, when we go to sleep at night, um, sometimes it's connecting with those ET counterparts of ourselves, or it might be, you know, connecting with other multidimensional aspects or meeting with guides and different things as well. Some of my experiences uh, deal with precognitive dreams. I've had countless precognitive dreams. And when we have these, uh, so Rita, it really makes you wonder, like, time, it's not all it's cracked up to be, because if you can go to sleep and you dream, and then a day, a week, a month, years down the track, you experience exactly what you dreamed and know that you've dreamt it. And what's even weirder sometimes, so rare, is if, say, I have a precognitive dream uh, of doing something a week ago. But somebody else could have the same precog, uh, the same or similar dream involving me, in the exact same scenario. But he could, he or she could have it a month, two months, three years down the track, and then we meet each other. Even though that the time, in the linear sense, is completely out of whack, at some level we met in this dream pool, this timeless kind of realm, and it just really makes you wonder, you know, what what's up with this this time aspect and. Have you yeah. given thought to, to how we, as beings in physical embodiment, how we can tap into that ta timelessness uh, of ourselves? Because that deals with all this multidimensionalness, if that's the world, that, and, you know, the timeless factor. Yeah, and, and that's something that's really shifted and changed in the last, not only 10 years have I seen a shift in that, but even in the last two years, there's been a, a big shift to do with like our time and our reality. And the way that I see it is time is sort of like a veil. So it kind of like softens things and dulls things down. It's like looking at life behind a big, heavy, thick curtain um, or a big, heavy, uh, thick veil. And what I'm seeing with that is even like normal uh, sort of like everyday people that maybe don't believe in any of this stuff are talking about, hey, time's speeding up or like I can't believe how fast the year's gone. Even kids which run on it, you know, like when we're a child, we run on a different time reality. We don't have that same perception of awareness like an adult would have of time. And even I'm noticing like with my own kids and with other kids is they're talking about time going so fast. Yes. Um, I don't know if you remember back to being a kid yourself, but I remember, you know, school would really drag on, the, the year would drag on. It seemed to take forever to get from like seven to 10 years old. Whereas like kids now are like, wow, I can't believe how fast time has gone. And that's what I'm seeing is like some of those veils that we have in the 3D world have really 
started to lift. So like our physical reality is changing and we are getting more of a multidimensional awareness. And I think we are meeting people that are more connected to our soul path, more connected to our spiritual development. Like we're learning the lessons a lot quicker possibly than what we have in the past. And we're not having to um, play out the same karmic patterns for a lifetime. We're having possibly, you know, a few in one lifetime. There's talk also about not only are we familiar with concepts such as uh, parallel timelines and alternate realities, but the, the notion that, and I think there's something to this, Lorita, I'd, I'd like your thoughts on it, that there are at some points an intersection, an intermingling, emerging, if you will, at times, mm. no pun intended, of <laughs> these different parallel uh, time streams that are running in parallel with each other. And it, some people talk about the Mandela effect. Mm. In, in my own personal life, I'm, I'm going to be 55 years old. And I can look back and it seems like some aspects of, of history have kind of changed around a little bit. I don't know if it's some big hoax where everyone's or, or someone is, you know, doing all this stuff to fool people like me but it seems like certain aspects of historical events have kind of changed subtly or, or not so subtly. And what are your thoughts on that? Do you see any kind of an intermingling, if you will, emerging at times? Yeah, definitely. And I've experienced the Mandela effect as well. Um, you know, thinking that certain celebrities have died and then finding out, oh no, they've only now just died. I'm like, I'm sure they've passed, you know, five years ago. And like, you know, having definite memories about that or, you know, different books. Um, people talk about, you know, different books having different titles, um, different movies having different endings, uh, you know, things like that. I think on some level, there's possible things being played around with our, time our timelines. Yes, definitely. Definitely different technologies being used that are, you know, we're at a different level of consciousness. So perhaps in the past, we might not have noticed that there was a difference within our reality or the reality had possibly been altered or changed. But I think we're all coming to a different perceptual awareness. Um, and I think this is something that I'm seeing just continue to grow and somewhere that, um, you know, I guess on our 3D Earth projection timeline is that we are still spiritually advancing and spiritually uh, progressing. And the more that we realize this, the more that we're then able to shift our own timelines and shift our own realities too. So it's not just participating in these events and things that are happening. This is also, if we look at it as sort of more of an inflection or like to look at how we can use this in our life, we can also create those time shifts and changes within ourselves. So, uh, some people will talk about it, you know, pulling a feeling in. Um, so for me, like I've, I've just met someone who's really lovely. So I got a new, um, have a new partner. And part of like what I shifted within my reality, I think it was maybe um, two days before I met him, I started to download and work with like mentally a new template for relationships and a new template for how I want it to feel in love and in a partnership and in relation with someone. And it was funny, I put, um, so yeah, put an app on my phone, never thought I would do like the whole dating app thing. Yeah. Uh, and two days later, meet, um, you know, someone, my first date that I go on the date with. But it was, so there was shifting that template, putting out how I want it to feel, embodying that and feeling as though that's already happening. And then I had to take the physical action of actually putting it out there into the 3D. So that was actually installing the app on my phone, you know, writing the profile, that sort of thing. So we are able to make changes and um, shift in our realities. And the, the implications that can come with that when you're really put out like what it is and get so specific and so clear on what it is that you're looking for. It is phenomenal. Like the level of change that we can create when it, within our lives. We absolutely can because what I'm starting to notice, Alita, with, with certain people that have this uh, multidimensional sensibility, let's say is, and Greg Braden talks about this in his own way with the divine matrix. Mm-hmm. When, it, when the intentions are backed by a, a very strong, positive, upbeat, emotional drive, and it, as you know, the, the heart is a powerful electromagnetic dynamo. I mean, the energy emissions from our mm -hmm. hearts, just, 
extends so far out, not just in the physical space, but as you know, in a multidimensional sense. So when we can focus our intent and we, we divest ourselves of as much clutter, as, as much shame-basedness, if that's a word, uh, and work through all of our inner shadow issues and, and do as much healing and re reintegration as possible, we can see if we pay attention in, in myriad different ways how we do actually create these momentary bubbles of, of, of creation, of abundance, of, of manifestation. And to the point where when the intent is right and in, in a positive sense or in, in, a, in a circumstance where, say, there's an element of danger involved, with just the right amount of intent and the emotional drive behind it, people can avert accidents, they can change things around, they can, they can save themselves from a lot of grief. So, Retta, have you started to notice that in, in your life and in the lives of some of your clients? Yeah, definitely. And it's really interesting because when you look into um, like certain, I guess, pathways that you can step into, so we always have choice. We always have free will here on earth. And it's really interesting in you know, if I go back to readings that I was doing 10 years ago or even further, um, you know, 20 years ago, as I started doing readings probably around age 15, so um, quite a long time now, uh, you know, more just starting out with friends and things, but really using the psychic gifts, uh, we, we tended to have more of like a karma that we were living out or more that, you know, like for a soul growth, you know, this, this kind of needed to take place for this soul lesson to happen. Whereas now we're evolution, um, like the evolutionary stage that we're at, we're more able to have free will and we're more able to consciously choose and pick. So like, as you were saying, you know, about um, doing the shadow work and cleaning things out, I think that's super important. And I know that a lot of people are really working on that right now, which is going to enable us to be able to have more of that um, like advanced growth that our souls are really craving. And I think this is part of that homesickness that a lot of people feel as well. Um, so we're doing the work a lot faster than what we would have say 10, 20 years ago. Yes. And it, and it jibes with what we spoke about earlier, the, what Art Bell talks about the quickening of things mm -hmm. seem to be speeding up. Time seems to be speeding up. And I do remember those days as a child, uh, uh, Sol Rita, where like the days seem to last forever. I mean, you'd be out there playing and, it's, and then it's nighttime and you're still playing mm -hmm. and, and that's just one day, right? Mm -hmm. And then now it's like days, weeks and months just blur by. And I think it, it's symptomatic of this, uh, of this uh, quickening uh, process. Now, Definitely. in the recent past, Tell me what you feel about the current um, energy fluxes that we're feeling, because uh, just in the last 48 hours, 72 hours, a lot of people reported, lack of a better term, kind of a heaviness, kind of the energy's amped up, so it's affecting people in different ways. It's making some people, I wouldn't say lethargic, but very sleepy, tired. Other people, it's, it's bringing, out, bringing about kind of a mental fugue state. Other people that are more grounded and, and more embodied they're, they're handling it better. What are you feeling and, and what's your advice to people going through uh, an energetic period such as we're going through right now? Yeah, and something you were just saying about, um, you know, being a child and remembering the time going a lot slower as well is that I remember when I used to, because you can consciously put yourself between dimensions or take yourself to like a universal void type place. And I remember doing those projections consciously when I was, um, you know, around four or five years old. And to do that and to allow yourself to go into that energetic space, it felt so heavy and thick, the energy of it, in terms of like to get your energy from this physical 3D reality to go within that space. It was quite energetically bombarding in the sense of there was probably such a difference in vibration um, to do with, you know, going from physical into non-physical. Whereas like where we're at now energetically, our energies are... I guess like a little bit more um, refined and we're able to pick up on information a lot easier. There's not such a divide between the dimensions and between uh, the reality. So I think that's where it is important to, um, to do the shadow work and to, to also remain grounded because we can get distracted and, um, you know, bombarded by all of the energies that are going on um, and the solar flares and the planetary um, yeah. alignment and things. We really tend to be very affected by, 
a lot of these planetary alignments, even I guess my friends and I would refer to um, like the normal everyday people more as muggles, you know, for lack of a better word, the Harry Potter term for non magicals um, And even non muggles are like, what is happening? And then you might mention, you know, oh, it's Mercury retrograde, which, you know, mucks with computers. There's, you know, blasts from the past, people coming back that they may not have seen for 10, 15 years, different, um, you know, karmic things coming up. And even like the muggles are recognizing that, you know, something is different. Yes. That's a big indicator for change when the muggles are waking up too. Uh, in the time we've got left uh, in this segment, so Rita, uh, t- tell us a bit about uh, how you take your clients through the, uh, the process because Kylie, my wife had uh, a reading with you and, she said that you were spot on in so many things. You knew things about her, her life, her, her, her multidimensional and mystical life as well, let's say, that you couldn't possibly have known with the normal senses. So you were able to tap in at, at a very deep level. Uh, and, and while we're at it, please uh, give your website uh, to, to our listeners too. Yeah, sure. So um, just to find my website, it's www.sorita.com, so S O L. R-E-T-A. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. I do a lot of posting uh, on both those places. Uh, so yeah, um, it was beautiful reading for Kylie. That was quite a few years ago now. And a lot of the time when I am working with clients, it's like so in that space and in that moment, it's like a, you know, a portal opens up and I receive the information uh, working with uh, not only looking at the aura and the energy of the person, but also working with what the guides are saying. And then we'll also do um, tarot cards as well. So with the tarot cards, I use them psycho- like with psychometry, which is where I tune in with the energy of the card face down and I'm listening to the information from the guides and I'm looking at the aura and picking up, you know, all different uh, psychic uh, information, whether it's like physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, uh, and looking at like where the placement is on the body. So I'm receiving, I guess you would call it like a download or a streaming of all of this data coming in. And all my job is to do is to relay that data and information. So for me, seeing different colors is a whole nother language. So like, you know, how we're speaking now, we're speaking English. Color to me is a whole language in itself. And I feel it uh, spoken to me, not just like telepathically, and with words and things. So I guess I work as a translator to translate spirit into this physical reality so that it can help people. Um, but yeah, I don't always remember like what I say after coming out of the session. So sometimes people will say, oh, you know, it was so amazing that session I had with you and this happened and this happened. Remember like you told me about this and quite often I don't always remember because it's, you know, working with spirit in that moment, you're so psychically attuned that it's like the, it's like I go into two brains. So there's like the the earth brain and then there's more the spiritual brain or more like the creative, uh, you know, faculties are more in use when I'm working with spirit. I feel like I'm working in a very ADD space. So my, I guess, psychically, I feel like that everything's like, you know, ultra attuned and sensitive and I'm picking up on multiple streams of information at that one time. Um... Yeah, so I guess that's like a little bit about how I work, but working with the psychometry, with getting the information with the cards, what's so interesting is that you'll feel the different energies coming off the cards and the guides will describe the cards to me in terms of, okay, so we're working with this card represents past, this represents present, this represents future, and it might be on one particular topic or it might be on a career or relationship. And... Um, whatever they've finished, like with the cards, they're like, all right, you can flip the card over now. So the guys will tell me, you know, they'll keep talking until we've got as much information. Sometimes they might even spend, you know, 20 minutes talking on one particular card. If it's really, really relevant, we'll get past life information come up in relation to what's happening in the here and now on this earth plane. Um, you know, there might be other people coming that are connected with it. There might be new talents or skills or gifts that they're encouraging the person to work with or study. And when they say that we're you know, done working with the card and we can flip it over, I would say 99% of the time, whatever is on the card is exactly what the, the guides have talked to us about. And they say to me, it's still important to use the cards because for our human brains and our human consciousness to have that confirmation of the information that the guides are relaying, 
we we need that kind of confirmation still we're at the um, point where we can just sort of take things on like a word value it's good to have that physical sight of oh my god there's that symbol that you know picture that they were talking about and you see that exact symbol on the cards it brings it down concretely it brings it down into yeah. 3d right? it definitely does and uh real quickly before the segment is over one of the uh, things I've heard from certain uh, psychics and intuitives is sometimes th they have a problem uh, putting up, lack of a better term, the adequate shields, defense mechanisms, uh, prevent themselves from being drained too much because there's an energetic aspect to this. It's, it's a lot of work involved, folks, a lot of energetic work. And how does uh, an intuitive, how, how does a, a psychic, keep from being depleted? How do they keep, because what happens sometimes, you know, Sil Rita, if there's holes in the org field, and then maybe down the track, they may start having physical maladies. It goes from the, the energetic body, and then it goes to the physical body. And that, you know, could be a happy hunting ground for some of you know, these less than pleasant beings also. You know what I mean? So how does a yeah. psychic keep themselves from getting depleted, getting drained, and, you know, keeping their integrity? energetically and physically yeah so um, for me i think because i've worked with this sort of energy from such a young age it feels more uh, like second nature so i definitely will put up like a i guess like a, a field um not even consciously so much anymore it's just it seems to be something that i've kind of set or you know have that intention in my aura to be in that protective space and definitely protective space around the client that i'm working with too um for me having uh, looked into different types of avenues of, of readings and um you know different psychic modalities and things uh when i was um a little bit younger i looked into mediumship and done like a bit of mediumship work and a bit of like platform work so um mediumship is more a term of connecting to spirits that have passed on for me i think i did it was a, a weekend workshop on it with a really famous um medium here in melbourne australia who actually won the tv show the one who just is incredible as a medium uh and it was funny so i did uh, his class and at the end of the two days, I got invited to go to like an advanced class, which was invitation only. And for me, it just didn't feel right. I'm like, I feel so tired after doing this kind of work. And I think what it was is that tuning into the energy of spirits that had passed on, for me, it felt like it really brought my energy down. I was so fatigued and tired. It would take me like days to get over working with that sort of energy. But there is people that work with that and they don't get as tired or they'll 